three kinds of faults. Yesterday in class we read about the three kinds of faults and we remembered that faults are caused by stress in the crust and stress is produced at plate boundaries when those plates shift. So today we're going to create a model. Hi guys, today we'll be making a 3D model of a fault. It's going to be made out of paper and we're going to use that so that we can demonstrate the three kinds of faults that we learned about in class yesterday. And we'll also take some time in today's class to review the tectonic plate boundaries, the type of stress that results from movement at those boundaries, and how they connect to the types of faults that we're going to make with our paper model today. So let's get started. Here is your paper model and this is what it looks like before we get started cutting it out. Next we're going to follow the directions and use our color pencils at our table to color in the fault model. Now you can see that we're just walking through the uh, coloring key using the color pencils to color the layers of rock, making sure that rock layer X is all one color, rock layer Y is all one color, and rock layer Z is all one color. And then color in your road and your river. And if you want to, you can even add a tree, a house, a car on the road, and a train on the train tracks. Now we're ready to cut out using our scissors. As you can see, the model is cut out all the way around, making sure not to cut off the tabs. And then, across the center along the fault line that is dotted, we're cutting that as well. We now have two halves of a fault, a hanging wall and a foot wall. Let's identify them. As you can see, I have the foot wall here, the shorter or smaller half of the fault. You can tell it's a foot wall because the side of it is angled like a ramp. When you're putting together your fault model, it's important to use those tabs, the ones we didn't cut out. You want to make sure you turn those to the inside before you start taping. When we start taping, you're going to tape either on the outside or the inside, but make sure your rock layers match up and the tab is on the inside, so it's covered up. Here's an example of one of the edges that's taped. When you put it together, you'll see that you have two halves, and the two halves can kind of match close to each other. They represent the two sides of the fault. Now we're going to get ready to start moving our fault model following the directions on our lab procedure. We'll move the fault model either up or down to match the letters according to the procedure and then observe what happens to the fault model and the parts of the fault model and record our observations on the data table. We'll end up finding out what could happen to the river or to the road or to the train tracks as a result of movement along the fault. Some examples you can see right here. As you complete each of the steps in your lab procedure today, be sure to take a picture of that fault and the movement along the fault to add to your data table in your Google document for today's class. When you're all done, answer the questions on the Google document and make sure you turn it into the classroom. Good luck. Have a great day.